It's awesome, awesome, awesome to see you again in another Tech Conversation Secrets. It's Friday. My name is Carlos Vargas. Awesome to see you. Depend when you're looking at us, you can be joining us through Instagram, through LinkedIn, through Facebook. Uh, let us your comment. Let us know where you're watching. Uh, it's awesome. A good cup of coffee. We're technology professionals. And after a week looking at different things completing the week taking some time to meditate and i was looking at this past year a couple of meetings different things that have happened and i was looking that they are some skills that from career uh, people call it soft skills and i remember People tell me you need to polish your soft skills. And I never understood why they call it soft skills. And working through my career, I focus a lot on the technical side, all the search, building, doing different things. And it was not after later on when I start going for roles that will help me lead that I start understanding that those skills that they used to call them soft, they were actually really, really important. And I decided to start going into it. And from my notes and from thinking about it, there, there are a couple of, of those skills. I'm going to call it secrets or traits that, if I remember correctly, have served me immensely and i think that they will serve you as you're watching this you're listening to it i know that you're watching so let me know where you're watching from thinking about when i sit down on a meeting with another co-worker on a meeting with a prospect on a meeting with someone else the first secret that I think that after years, and I make a lot of mistakes in, in some of these areas, is the idea of to be able to become like an energizer bunny. And I'm not plugging anything, but I remember that as a kid, the commercial for the energizer bunny, that he was jumping everywhere. And as leaders or technology professionals that we may lead teams or interact with others, it's very important for us to think about the other person first. I'm going to call it selflessness. And the idea that you take the time to understand them first. And, and you're going to say, hey, Carlos, this is supposed to be all tech. Yeah, I know. But here's a perfect example. I was on a meeting uh, some time ago and the person was very technical and started spewing out all the technical details right away and not thinking about how to help the other person go up, not only about the tech. And it took me a while to understand that truly, in order for me to make a connection, to become a trusted advisor for someone else, 
that someone can call and say, hey, I need your help. I needed to realize that I needed to first think about, John Maxwell called it putting a 10 on someone else's head. And it's the idea of that you see the good on someone else and you try to lift them up. So thinking about that, normally I take the time to not think about me, what I want to accomplish. Yeah. If you're on a sales call, if you're presenting a technology, you definitely want to provide value. But the value need to be focused on the other person first, not on what you want, because that's going to make the biggest difference and the biggest impact across what you're doing. Number two is actually to take the time to think, am I getting better? Sometimes we can call this humility. Humility is not to think less of you, it's to think less about you. And, and I remember that it was not until I realized that I needed, in, if I wanted at one point in time that my team would grow, but I was only thinking about my development. I was only thinking about what I could learn and I needed to look at how to connect with the rest of the team to help them move forward. So looking at that, it was interesting because I remember um, one of my friends, I'm not going to say his name, but um, at the beginning when Ubuntu Linux was coming out, I was learning Ubuntu. We were doing things with Ubuntu. Um, and he started calling it Telemundo. And if you know in Spanish, Telemundo is a Spanish TV station. But it was funny because the team was rallying behind me for what we were doing. But they were not understanding it because I was the one doing it. I was not bringing them in. So... I think that that number two, uh, take the time to look for those opportunities that you can bring your team or help someone else learn something because in that way they can now grow. They will follow. Yesterday I was watching a video from, uh, in YouTube and it was talking about the proof of leadership is the followers, people, and it's not, I'm not talking about Instagram followers. I'm not talking about LinkedIn followers or Facebook followers is are people willing to go in the journey with you? And are they doing something that you're saying? I have one of my friends, um, and I think that probably he's connected and he even have a meme that he says, build your email list. Uh, Dave, I plug there for you. And it's interesting because I think that I know Dave for probably 10 years. He's been saying that for probably to 10 years and he show how to do it. Um, he take the time to help other people learn it. And people still ask, but our job as technology leaders to help others succeed is that we want to help them in that process to take that time. Um, another area that I actually took the time to look at it was thinking before speaking. And I say that as number three. I'm going to call it a little, I'm going to call it empathy or the area of empathy because we think very fast as leaders. We're always thinking we're ahead. We're the tip of the spear. When other people are not doing something, we're testing it. We're researching it. We're reading it. 
But really, it takes time to slow down and not speak before the other person finishes their thought. And I remember having a ton of problems about this. And the reason was that I already knew what they were going to say because I have, have hurt someone before or the problem or something like that. The interesting details that I knew probably the symptom. I didn't, I didn't have an idea of where they were coming from. I didn't have an idea of what was the problem. Let's say if they were talking about running a new app, I may have already have the idea of, okay, it's a web app. Okay. I already knew the stack where it was going to run the language that was going to be written, the database where the data was going to be stored. But I was not listening to what was the backstory, why they were trying to build that app. What was the reason for it? If it was on the personal side, taking the time to understand how that person was feeling how they were going through that challenge. And you're going to say, Carlos, all these things are good, but how will that help me with my team? How will that help me be better at selling my product? And it's interesting because we think about selling a product, but we don't realize that we're building a relationship with another human being. So we're interacting with other people. And as we're interacting with other people, that is the key that we need to realize we're not there just for a transaction. We're there to actually create relationship. People buy from people they trust. So in order for us to get trusted, we need to understand when that, where that person is coming from. And it was interesting because even internally, I didn't get that at my the beginning of my career. We're constantly building those relationships or selling even internally within our organization. And when we look at that, It was very impactful for me because I wanted to go up, but I was not listening. I was not taking the time to lift other people up. And it was, it was cool, but scary at the same time, because one day I actually got a VP that walked by my office and it was a Friday. And he actually, we were good friends. So this next one that is safety, um, it was a very safe environment. So we were able to talk. We were working on projects, doing different things. And he actually came one day and said, Carlos, I need you to give up your power. And probably if you're on a technology, you know that when somebody talk about power or giving something up, We're a little bit protective because like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you talking about? Um, that are you going to take away what is mine? And I was thinking about it as that, wait, if he's telling me that I have to give up, I need to, I'm going to lose. And he took the time to actually show me in order for you to go up, there was something that I wanted. You need to give up. And I remember that conversation until this day, it happened probably more than 15, yeah, probably more than 15 years. And the reason that I remember that, because number one, it was a safe environment where there was mutual respect. So we were able to have the tough conversations, but at the same time, it was a great moment of actually of coaching 
and showing me that not only my technical skills were the ones that gonna help me go up. And to make the long story short, I actually start sharing and giving up my power. And it was not that I was not doing anything. It was that then I was training my team in a lot of other areas that I had expertise that even though initially they did not want it, but because I share what I was doing, I was able to do more things. And I share this because as the normal professionals, we need to make everyone that we speak with, everyone that we interact with to feel safe in the area that we're not taking advantage with them, that we're actually there to become an extension of their team could be an internal team. If it's an external, that is an extension of their team. If you're also in your personal side, safety actually help communicate better. And if you don't, if you don't believe me, ask your significant other, they want to feel safe. So the idea that we can feel safe that will actually help the decision-making process. Number five is to actually take, first of all, the decision to be a positive force. I'm not talking about uh, rah, 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 only positive and on the back end, actually be thinking negative about everything. What I'm talking about actually have a positive stand. Start with you. We're here and you can be the greatest technology professional. You can have a big team, but if the way you conduct yourself and you look at things are always on the negative side, like the sky is falling. I remember that movie. Uh, when I have my little one, Chicken Little, and he used to love that movie. Uh, and the little chicken is, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. You actually, things are going to go sideways. That's a fact of life. Things are going to get difficult. Things are going to get challenging. But when you look at it, you actually can take a different approach because as leaders, what we do is that we actually are constantly striving for making the difference. And when we are the positive force, people can see a difference. Um, commander O'Rourke, uh, he was a SEAL team commander. And I remember going to see one of his speech one time. And I always remember because he shared a story that they invite him to go back to the academy after he was a, a commander. And all the SEAL team uh, were there trying to learn and say, I'm going to share something with you. So everybody was like paying attention. And he, he was sharing that. He said, calm is contagious. And he said that everybody like was looking at like... Uh, is that it? And he said, yeah. When you are in the middle of the battle, when you're calm, when you're positive, looking at what the outcome, what the goal is, that help you focus. Because if not, if all of a sudden you lose your cool, you're looking at the sky is falling, then things can go wrong. And in, in his example, he was talking about, yeah, it's a matter of life and death. In our case, it may not be a matter of life and death, but when we become the coolness, when we're looking at what are the positive outcome, there is always an answer. And there's always a way of how to move forward. I think the question is, what are we going to do to actually take the time to make the difference? Because when we become that positive force, we actually can then help the rest of the team, the organization, that customer 
to actually trust us in a better way and actually look, oh, wait, this person, when I am in the middle of a problem, he was calm. I'm going to go to him. It, they, they're not going to say that exactly. But if you look at it, that's technically what they're doing. Wait, let me go towards him, towards her, because when I have a problem, I know that they can go. You know, there's one more that I actually like, that I learned. And on all those that I have shared, it's not that I am 100%. I'm constantly working on them. And it's something that I think that a lot of people together, we are one and we struggle with it. I don't know you, but I wish that I could have probably 48 hours in a day. It's the idea of really organizing everything that I have to do. And, and the reason for it, we may have budgets, we may have projects, and we need to organize everything that we do. And sometimes, again, from past experience, as a technology professional, we sometimes focus too much in what is next. I'm going to go for the next thing. I'm going to try. If I had to do a demo, I'm going to go for the next demo. I'm going to go for the next meeting. But to actually organize everything that you do in a better way, it gives you time to reflect, time to organize yourself. To give an idea, sometimes in my calendar, I block specific times during the day so I can think and meditate about the meetings or what is happening in that day. You're going to say, Carlos, but I'm at work. I'm like, that's the reason why. Because at one point in time, my calendar was packed full of meetings. And what was happening is that I was not organizing my time. Yeah, people, when they recognize a leader, they're going to invite them to a ton of meetings. There are things that I didn't need to be there, but they invited me for. And what happens is that then we think that we're like computers, that we can multitask. And if you truly look at what multitasking is on a computer, it's actually time slicing. So one process work, another one goes. So I'm not going to go too technical on that, but. And the reason that I say this is that I needed to block some time so I can actually reflect on that meeting. Were there any actions or any work that I needed to complete? Because what I was doing is like I had a whole day of meetings. And I said at that time I was taking the train from the office back to where I was parking my car. And it was about like an hour, hour 10. Uh, commute. And I say, well, in the train, I will look through everything that I have to do. And what ended up happening was that because I was so tired of the whole day, probably nuances or details from the meeting, I was missing them. So then I was not being effective at probably taking the correct actions that I needed to do. So one detail that I implemented for myself was actually, like I said, blocking some time after a meeting to see what I need to do complete and like close that meeting. Was there anything else that I need to do to contribute, to help in regards to that meeting? If not, done. If I need to do something, finish it, complete it and move forward. And the reason that I sh share this is so you can learn to organize yourself so you can become that force that actually can transform your company or your team. These are six simple areas or secrets that I truly believe have help me and will help you 
to actually become literally like a battery. You're charged. And when you get into a meeting, when you interact with others, you will be the difference maker. You will be that leader that I know that you can be. So my friends, thank you for tuning in. Leave us your comments again, subscribe to our channels. My friends, we'll see you on our next episode.